they call it terrible twos for a reason. If you are a parent with a child who is two years old, I know you can relate to this, that your child is always on the move. It's not possible for you to make them sit at one place or be engaged with one particular activity. And you're always worried about how I can make the most and best use of this two year old. In this video, I'm going to help you with 20 different activities, which anytime, anywhere is going to work out so much for every two year old out there. So keep watching this video till the end of this so that you get the maximum out of it. And it is going to stop you from going on, keep on searching in Google, Instagram, Pinterest for giving me activities to engage, activities to engage. You don't have to go to any of those place. Just come to this video, watch this one time and you are all set. If you're watching me for the very first time, hey, I'm Dr. Nali. I'm a whole brain acceleration coach. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Instagram account so that you don't miss out any such videos. Come, let's get started now. The first activity which I am going to share with you is one of the sensory activities. So children learn with all of these senses. That's why you see that when a two-year-old, when they are taking in contact with any of the object, immediately they learn with all of their senses, which means that if they are having a charger, they are going to touch it, to feel it, they are seeing it, they are banging on the floor and hearing how what sound it makes, they smell it and they also put it in the mouth to taste how it tastes like. So this is how a toddler or a very small baby learns every single thing around the environment. They learn all their five senses and that is how they are learning about their environment. In order for them to use multiple senses, that is one of the key areas whenever you are giving any activities for your young child, it is advisable to give them activities which are you, which are multi-sensory. It is not just on seeing or just on hearing or just touching, but if you give them something to touch and play with, then it's more engaging for them and that is going to improve their uh, sensory skills and a lot of immense benefits around it. So the first thing is Play-Doh. This is so, so amazing for children of this age group because it's something that they can squish, they can squeeze, they can make shapes and so much. But for expecting a two-year-old to make the shapes exactly as you are asking them to do, it is not possible. So just give them the Play-Dohs, which they can actually squeeze and use all their senses to actually go through it and have that calming effect also. So in order for very young children, when we are considering them, since they learn through all of the senses, it's better to have a non-toxic Play-Doh if you are buying it from outside or you can even make your own Play-Doh from the corn flour and, uh, or even maida or wheat flour that you are using. You can just add few drops of colors for them to use it. But you may not be able to use this for a longer period of time. Maybe you can refrigerate it for some time and then you reuse it. But if you are getting something from the store, make sure that they are non-toxic because they are the toxic materials are not safe for children. So just be mindful of that. In order for you to um, make sure that your child is doing Play-Doh uh, to, to the fullest and maximum, it is better to give them a big tray uh, just to hold the messes. And you can also give them some papers or you, there are also some Play-Doh mats which you can use or you can make your own Play-Doh mats by just uh, drawing something on a laminated sheet or you can have some pictures printed out and you are laminating it for reusability or you can simply take a paper drawing a flower and ask the child to fill the colors with Play-Doh. So it is again depending on the child's developmental growth they may play Play-Dohs in a variety of ways. Sometimes all they love to do is only squeezing Sometimes all they love to do is just peeling it out and rolling it, even though they may not be able to roll it perfectly yet, but they will try it. Uh, some children, they love to bang those things with the tools which they may have and cutting those things. So all of that is possible. So just letting the child be during the game is the perfect way of giving them the explorations instead of keep on telling like what you need what they need to do or um, keep on instructing them it will actually hinder their creativity so make sure that you are just leaving them at as their own wish okay number two this activity is a very cognitive activity at the same time it's going to help the child learn colors so it's a perfect activity for toddlers because they love colors they love colorful things so you can give them activities based on color sorting so this color sorting means they are grouping a particular object based on the colors so you can use 
balls of different colors for this game or you can use small small pom poms of course under adult supervision because pom poms are very small and they may have the choking effect so please make sure that you're always on the supervision uh, to the child you're always supervising them while they are playing with small small things and um, so you can use pom-poms you can use uh, color balls or you can use anything that is of similar colors i mean different colors and you can ask them to group them based on different, different colors okay red color goes here yellow color goes here you can even uh, if you are using something bigger objects you can have a separate basket labeled as red yellow blue and ask them to put all those items in that particular basket easiest way of doing this is like you know just telling the child a particular color and ask them to go around the house find things on that particular color so for example if it's orange ask them to go and find out what are all the things that you see in orange color in the house so this is one way of playing this game there are multiple ways of playing this game this uh, game will also help the child to put to be aware of a particular color to remind themselves the names for that particular color so you can also uh, choose one color per day. Today is focusing only on red. Tomorrow it's focusing only on green. Like that also you can do. You can also have a color basket in which one of the baskets you will be filling with the objects of the same particular color if you're teaching colors to the child. So this way um, you are teaching the child and during the color sorting game, you are actually making the child, helping the child to do it by themselves. Okay. Number three, this is a very, very favorite activity for all the toddlers. It's one of the my favorite activities as well. This is called as dress up. So just giving the child the independence and opportunity to do, do a dress up by themselves. Um, most of the times what happens is whenever the child is going for toilet or if they want to get ready out for out, out uh, to go out, um, that is when we always rush them, you know, uh, put on the t-shirt, put on the pants, put on the shoes, let's go, come on. So this is the kind of thing that we always do. We always keep rushing, rushing, rushing. But when we keep a pause, when we give them a pause and uh, just uh, let them uh, do it at their own pace if they can if we can give them that space and uh, freedom and also that uh, time and patience to for them to learn themselves it's going to help them with a greater life skill so you can give them uh, socks shoes especially slippers uh, as an activity for them to practice that skill this way they are also learning how to care for the dresses how to dress up for themselves they will also have that uh, focus and concentration skills improved because they are working on this task with all putting all their attention to it so it's one of the activities which you can give for them to practice this, these life skills and also while we are doing this um, you can also teach them how to fold their clothes uh, you can use any of the books where you are placing the uh, kerchiefs very very small small clothes you can use so you are folding the book and the cloth gets folded also and just something like that you can also give them that particular way of helping the child to learn a life skill and the number four um, is one of the favorite activities for children but some, for some of your parents it may be little intriguing because you may not like messy play but uh, trust me whenever the child is doing a messy play they are actually uh, having a lot of benefits in their emotional health as well so this is called as finger painting where you are going to give them a set of paints which they are going to use their fingers to dip and do okay so for um for parents who feel it's more triggered uh the mess when it makes uh when you feel that you are getting more triggered looking at the mess then the best way of um doing this is putting a big blanket kind of newspapers or big canvas sheet on the floor so that it's easy for catch, catch, catching all the uh, spills because uh, toddlers they do not know how much quantity of paints to use how much uh, uh, that how to handle the paints there will be a lot of spills and there will be a lot of uh, keeping touching here and there th that is going to be there for sure so instead of completely avoiding this activity only for these reasons let's give them the practice to find out like how you, they can actually um, handle the situation better so for uh, in order for you to do that better um, put a big I think there is also some of the reusable mats which are coming up right now where you can use that reusable mat, a washable mat on the floor and you can do the paintings on top of it. And if you don't have the reusable mats, you can always have um, the 
step of I do basically. So I just have a canvas sheet which I've just put it in the floor and on top of it I'll give them a A4 size paper for her to do some designs. I will also sometimes give a flower or a shift kind of thing so that she can use she have a structure to where she wants to do the finger painting and of course even though there's a lot of structure uh, for these kind of activities when it goes unstructured there will be a lot of creativity that the child will uh, flows through the, the flow the creativity will flow through from the child so that is more interesting and it's also more um helping in the independent play as well and number five is a uh, very important as well as for the cognitive skills it is called a matching game so if you have um uh, two to three uh cards which is of same uh pictures you can give them for matching the, the there are there are some uh, memory matching cards in the amazon maybe i'll give you a link in the description for you guys to have a look at it uh, we have some of the memory matching cards which we will just have it uh, on the i'll just give it like that and and ask my child to try to find out which is matching uh with the other card so they will be trying to match those two cards and how you can uh, the other way of uh, playing this game is by uh, matching the cards with the real-time objects if possible. Uh, for example, in our whole brain acceleration coaching, we do flashcards. So flashcards is one of the tools which we use to build a neural network connections in the baby's brain. And um, in our framework, what we do is one week we will be doing a particular set of uh, flashcards and from the next week onwards that particular week of flashcards which we have retired we will be reusing it for activities like this for example if the child has seen a set of flashcards which displays fruits then what i do is the next week onwards i'll be using those fruits flashcards which are retired from my whole brain acceleration to uh, giving them to match those uh, real fruits with the cards for example apple banana goa all of those cards which I'll be laying on the floor and on a basket I'll be giving them uh, some of the fruits the real-time fruits and just let them uh, find out which goes where and do the matching so this is one way of actually using the retired cards and also uh, helping the child to understand with hands-on activities and also the, the repetition the more the child is going to learn better and uh, it's one of the cognitive skills activity to match the object so that is one of the beautiful activity that you can actually give for your uh, two-year-old the next one is the uh, called as sand box here what you can do is you can take a big tray in which you can actually fill sand the actual sand or you can also get the kinetic sand which is easily available in amazon uh, so this is one of the very good um, play for the sensory hands what I do is I will be hiding some of the toys or small small toys or small small animal figures inside the sandbox in this sandbox i'll be hiding all of these things and i will ask my daughter to go and dig them and find out each of those uh, to uh toys or animals or whatever we have hidden in and whenever she's taking it out um she will name it otherwise if she doesn't know i will name it so this is also a great vocabulary exercise as well sometimes what i do is uh i used to write some words on small pieces of paper and I will put them inside so that when a child is taking that paper out I will call out that word for the child and this is one of the activities which I uh, personally use for teaching my daughter's letter sounds so whenever I'm teaching letter sounds we have the sandbox play where um, the letter sounds which we have been in uh, focus that I'll be putting inside the sand and I'll be hiding it uh, inside it so whenever uh, pulling out that sound we will call that uh, sound out so this is how she learned the letter sounds as well so this is when one of the beautiful again a messy activity to um, make sure that you're not triggered for all these messy activities make sure that you are putting a big uh, thing uh, on the floor so that um, the, it can easily catch the spills and it's very easy to clean up as well the next activity is again a very favorite for all the toddlers out there is the sensory play so what do i mean by sensory play is that take a big tray and fill it with rice or colored rices or beans or anything that you can uh, have the child can have the senses so it it can be uh played in different ways again you can either do the same kind of um hiding something inside the sensory bin and taking it out or you can also have different kind of different types of containers uh for the child to like a spoon for them to 
stick and put it inside the uh, boxes or you can also use um, the pouring, scooping and you can also have a funnel to filtering. All of these things, all of these practical life skills can be actually incorporated during the sensory place. What we love so much is having, I'll just have the tub in which I filled with um, colored rice or rice or beans and uh, I have one tumbler, one spoon, one cup and one tong. I just keep them uh, to the child. So I'll just let the child to choose whatever tools she wants to use and I'll just let her to play with it. There is no instructions. There is not much, uh, too much of instructions that I will be giving. I'll just observe how she's playing and uh, observe um, which tools she's using, how her fine motor skills are developing. So only that I'll be just observing and I'll just let her do it. And um, there are some times when she's not able to use the tongs. I will pitch in and I will teach her how to use the tongs and let her practice. So this is how we play the sensory play activities. The next one uh, that we are going to see today is hiding the toys it's one of the favorite activities which you can do anytime anywhere especially when you are doing busy work this is one of the go-to activities which you can do uh, take one toy and hide it under the blanket or hide it under the pillow and ask the child to first close their eyes and hide it somewhere and ask them to guess where it is and let them go and search for it. So it could be something that you can play in on the bed while you're working when the child is actually roaming around also so that you can actually work, balance your work and life. So this is, these are some of the activities which I've used while I'm working when my daughter used to play. So even now, right now, you can see that while I'm taking the video, my daughter is actually reading some books maybe pretending like reading but uh not sure but um yeah she, she's doing her work while i'm doing my work so this is the kind of activities which i'm telling you um which help us right now when she's three after three years is very helpful uh whatever activities which we did during her two year old is, is very much helpful uh, during this phase of when she turns three years so that um, more balance not much supervision uh, during the toddler years there will be a lot of supervision that parents has to give uh, it may be feeling like you are always there um, sitting next to them watching them all the time but it's very very necessary because the children doesn't know how to handle certain things and we have to be always keep on supervising because they have learned through all of the senses so it's better to give your complete attention when you're uh, doing activities with your two-year-old and expect your child to thrive through their life as they are growing up so coming back to the activities that we are giving to our child, one of the other activities to enhance their auditory skills it is called a Simon Says. This is a very favorite activity and very popular. So today we are actually enhancing the child's auditory skills by telling Simon Says, jump. Simon Says, dance. So this is one of the very good activities which you can uh, make the child to listen to the instructions carefully and act. So the focus, concentration, all of these things gets built up. And it's also a very fun activity to play with. And the next activity which I'm going to tell you is that alphabet match. Uh, for a two-year-old, uh, children uh, can actually recognize letters. <coughs> I mean, uh, recognize that something is written um, in the surroundings. So to help them read uh, in future years, this is one of the activities which you can do uh, uh, from the two years old so that they are getting awareness or print awareness is being established where they are uh, seeing the alphabets looking at the letter formation they can match them even with play dohs you can use to for them to let do the letter formation with that particular uh, alphabet so it's like more on the way how you are actually introducing the print awareness about the alphabets and numbers also so that they get to see how it looks like even though they know one two three they may be counting uh, but uh, they may be calling it out only by hearing uh, they are doing it but uh, giving them the letter formations is going to help them to learn how it's visible how it's looking when it's uh, printed so that is one of the things uh, i am a very great advocate of teaching children to read because reading is one of the best gifts that we can give to our children so that they are going to uh, seek knowledge by themselves um, we don't have to be all the time available for them to teach them all the time so they will be able to seek their knowledge if they know how to read so from her, my child's two-year-old, I used to give her activities based on uh, the letter sounds and just giving them the exposure of 
the letter so that uh, she was able to read before she turned three years. And that's a big, big milestone. I definitely owe to her brain acceleration. I'm also seeing some of my students uh, who are inside my Holistic Parenting Universe community are also able to do the same pattern. And they're also teaching the child to read at three years. And that's really amazing to know. So if you are a parent who wants to join our community of holistic parenting universe there's a link in my description where you can watch the free webinar where you understand uh what's and why's of this whole brain acceleration and if you feel resonated to it go ahead and join our silver membership and i would love to welcome you inside so coming back to the activities what is the next one the next one is um chalk chalk painting or chalk uh, scribbling or however you want to call it so this particular activity I would suggest you to do on outdoors where the child can actually go and scribble with the chalks wherever they want or you can also have a blackboard uh, kind of thing where they can actually scribble and it's basically a scribbling activity where uh, if there is a rock or if there is a platform where they can actually just just have their biggest canvas the mother earth is the biggest canvas and they are just going to do all the chalk structures they can actually do it it's a very fun activity you can also um, have different colors of uh, different colors of uh, chalks for them to use and the next one is um, having a ball game so <laughs> children loves ball games you can introduce different kind of ball games to a two-year-old you can have a small soft ball which you are using inside the house you can even have a cricket ball which you are having a toy cricket bat and toy cricket ball which you are using in the outdoors or if you even have a football or uh, where the child is kicking 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 and practicing the kicking skills um, you can also watch uh, let the child watch the uh, ball sports if any any uh, older children are playing in the community if you are seeing you can just let them watch how that is being played so having a ball pit that's more uh, enjoyable and fun for the child so introducing ball games is one of the uh, beautiful ways of how children loves to play and the next one is uh, water so children all children loves water so you can actually give them different uh, containers like sp spoons or bigger spoons or the glasses the cups like that for them to play with water they will be just you know pouring uh, and transferring water from one bowl to the other. So all of these skills are practical life skills and a lot of, lot of skills are being developed by using these kind of activities, which we cannot teach exclusively. Only with hands-on experiences, a child is learning by themselves. And uh, all, you all you can do is just giving them that opportunity. You can even add this ba bath time. Uh, during the bath time, you can also add this activity of playing with the water. So it's more fun. And uh, while I'm telling about the bathing, so the next activity comes with the bath foam. Uh, you can create a bubble bath kind of thing on the bucket or in the bathtub. You can even add some soap bubbles where you are creating that foam. Um, the most interesting part, how you can make this more interesting is by putting in some of the animal figurines inside, for example, dinosaurs or the wild animals or farm animals and ask the child to help them bath. So you are saying like it's a dinosaur bath day today. So you are putting all the dinosaur animal figurines into the bathtub where there's a lot of foam and the child is going to bath them. It's going to help them with kindness and uh, care for uh, care for for the environment also and um, it's, it's it's a very very fun activity for the child and they love to go to bath especially for two-year-olds when there's a lot of power struggles they don't want to go to bathing they always resist that restrict them and no i'm not coming so if you are dealing in with that kind of things right now then this is something that you want to try right away you're going to fill your bathtub with uh, all the foams, bubble bath, etc. You're going to hide some of the dinosaurs inside and you're going to invite your child to play our bath, the dinosaurs, and the child will be so, so excited to do that. And uh, yeah, the next one is uh, another favorite activity, uh, can it sink? So this is a very beautiful concept to teach your child, sink and float concept. You can have a container uh, where you're filling that container with water. You're going to take some objects which are sink 
and which can float and you can teach your child just look at this when it goes inside it's called sinking when it's floating outside it's called floating and you can now ask your child to experiment with the different objects you have collected and ask them to check whether it's sinking or floating of course you have to be very mindful on what objects you uh, choose because you don't let your child uh, to put your mobile phones or a charger inside the water to check whether it's sinking or floating so just have a mindful conversation about that as well if required the last few set of activities which i'm going to tell you is all about colors because at two year old children are more fascinated about colors and um, giving them activities i'm going to give you some of the examples where you can incorporate different color activities so the first one i mean the the continued one is like having the color ball just like how you play with the ball games this is like color balls you're putting into a pit or uh, putting into a basket of different colors and just let them enjoy it while they while they invent their own way of playing with it like you know <clears throat> sometimes the child will take it out and throw it uh, sometimes they will take it out and uh, call out the color name or you can also have place two different uh, uh, baskets and ask or one basket out there at a certain distance and ask the child to put that ball uh, into the basket so that is one of the ways how you can instruct maybe so the next one is on the color caves what you can do is you can create some cardboard sheets um of different colors you can just have small small things and you can ask your child to go and pick different objects from the house where they are doing go, going and taking some objects and they are going to put into that caves of that respective color so this is again a very fun game it's also like a treasure hunt game and the next one is color mixing children loves to see how colors are transforming itself so you can give them a color different colors of paints and ask them to mix it up and see what other color it produces like red and yellow what color produces green what color these two colors are bringing out so like that the child is going to experiment and see what new colors they are creating from already existing colors and there is another um, game how you can play with the play-doh of different play-dohs what you can do is you can um, maybe uh, draw up human face or any face and put a uh, hair like structures over there and ask the child to take different hair colors i mean different play-doh colors to keep that hair so when you see different um of different faces with different hair colors from play-doh it's a very beautiful sight to watch and it's going to create uh, open up a lot of creativity for the child as well so the next one is um uh reading to your baby which is very important and very one of the best skills to uh improve their vocabulary improve their language and also it's a great strong bonding with your child so considering uh reading as a, a bonding time with your child uh, maybe at the morning time or during the bedtime or any time in between if you can read to your child some storybooks you are going to form a great bonding with your child and also you are going to see that your child loves books also so you may uh do that and as well and the last uh, but not the least activity that i'm going to teach you is that um count everything toddlers love counting especially during this time uh, so they love to count 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 so just let them count wherever they see but when you are telling about the counting there is also another fact that i really want to tell that um, there is something called the stupidizing which the child is naturally born with every child uh, has this number sense when they are born and um, there is one of the activity which we do inside the whole brain acceleration is the math dot cards which where we will introduce um, numbers in terms of quantities so whenever we are uh, what is stupidizing is that that if the child is looking at five uh, objects instead of counting one two three four five they know it's five already so this is one of the beautiful skills which we can develop for the child because it's already there it's already uh, children possess this number sense already and all that we are doing is we are just enhancing their subitizing skills because this is going to help a lot in their mental math capabilities and uh, so much so many other benefits are there uh, so while the child is so much into counting you can also give them a lot of exposure to subitizing so that their innate uh, skill is not just lost and it's just getting defined and defined so there is one particular uh, intuitive math intelligence inside of a whole brain acceleration this is helping all the children to actually have their intuitive math within them enhancing it not losing it that is what we are doing so if you're interested about it again um go and join my silver membership the link is given in the below uh, description so you can get the maximum out of your child which is innate so that is also there um 
so yeah so all these activities are some of the ideas which i have given uh, what you how you can engage your child a 2 year old uh, with a lot of curiosity and lot of um, fun but um, one thing that every parent has to remember is that a uh, 2 year old doesn't follow much structure so giving them the exposure giving them the opportunity is what our uh, is what all we can do um how the child play or uh, how long they play is all depends on the child so let's be open uh, even if the child is playing for just um, uh one minute or 30 seconds or two minutes it's okay because uh, uh, the first time when they're seeing something um they may feel like okay yeah i love this i want to do this for a longer time but the same thing if it's repeated for multiple days they of course then oh i already know it so the the timing which they spend on that particular activity may become less so it's the time for you to switch or uh, different activities or different uh, types of activities okay yeah. So with that, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you have loved this video. Please save and uh, share this video with your friends who are parents who are struggling so hard to engage their two-year-olds. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please go and subscribe to it because you don't want to miss any of these kind of videos. Okay. So also follow me on Instagram as well if you want to catch up the snippets of my life on every day basis. So with that, what do you want me to post next video on please share that in the comments below so i read every comment and i'll definitely give uh the whatever i'm able to share with you guys i'd love to do it so thank you so much for being here thank you for staying till the end of this uh video and truly grateful for each one of you who are my subscribers and who are following me watching my videos again and again thank you so much so i'll meet you in the next video with another topic Bye bye